Um, yes, it's me. And while we set up, I've got a question for you. Who here has worked with WebAssembly? Maybe raise hands. Wow, not bad. Awesome. Who has built a WebAssembly runtime? No? Yes? We should talk. Uh, <laughs> um, so let me open that. All right. Does that work? That looks good. Cool. Awesome. So, uh, yes, the name, K23. Um, and that is the name because it's a kernel I started last year. Very easy. Um, I'm not, well, right now I'm actually doing R&D. Um, I also work at Tari, as said. Uh, I'm not here for that at all. I'm just me, to be honest. Um, and I've been working on a operating system, right? And whenever I talk to people about it, the first question, or the first thing they say is like, wow, cool. And second question is why, right? Um, and so I always answer that with, you know, something like that. When, you know, because like when the operating systems that we all use day, day to day, they were born in a time when computers looked like that, phones looked like that, and the Berlin Wall just fell, right? Most notably, no internet inside. And there's a quote by uh, Graydon, he talked about Rust in that context, but I, f I feel like it applies to operating systems as well. And it, I, I like it a lot. And it's, uh, the internet is highly concurrent and highly security conscious. So the design trade-offs that always favor C and C++ have been shifting, right? And I feel like that is just like a very elegant way to put it because, you know, the operating systems we use day to day, they aren't bad, right? They are good pieces of software, but just designed from a very different time. And I feel like, you know, there's space to explore new ideas. And it's also just, you know, very fun to do it. I like it. So, you know, what's the thing? Like, what's the project? Let me paint you a picture, right? I, as sort of an end user, you know, I don't want to deal with malware. I don't want to, you know, worry about architectures. Is it like Intel? Is it ARM? Is it like, oh, shit, downloaded the wrong thing? Like, mm, right? I also personally really hate dynamic linking, like in its current incarnation, right? Always have issues with it. Don't really like it. And then please don't be offended if you use Linux. I also don't really like Linux dependency management. It's a mess. Um, especially with Tori, we have all sorts of issues. Um, we even now started, you know, our own apt uh, repository because it was such a mess. Um, so the idea that, you know, I landed on for, for the prototype is a microcom, right? It's a small kernel, drivers, libraries, applications, everything runs in user space, which gives, you know, better isolation, better stability, but, you know, traditionally has also higher overhead. And that's where WebAssembly comes in. Um, you know, sort of to visualize that a bit, we have the kernel, right, kernel space, very small. Most of that lives done in user space, right? The drivers live in user space. We have sort of our system interface and then user space programs and everything sort of depends on one another. Um, which brings me to like a, another feature that I really care about, which is built-in package management, right? Dependency management. Why does it need to be bolted on afterwards? Just, you know, make it first-class citizen, have the operating system know about it. In WebAssembly, that looks a bit like that, right? You import a package or a component in that case, and components, you know, import other components. They do it by a registry, a name, a version, and then more importantly, also a content integrity hash, right? And that means, you know, it's reproducible. It's, I can check it. It's even content addressable if you care about that. And the, the more, you know, important part that I care about, it's like it's built in, right? It's like first class citizen. Back to the diagram, right? The arrows imports, right? Like the WASI FS, right? That imports the disk drivers and then user space programs import the WASI FS interface and can like do disk operations with it. Right, so to recap, microkernel running WebAssembly may means, you know, sandbox drivers, demons, applications, anything. Uh, and it has, you know, built in reproducible dependency management. That is the idea. So, you know, what are, what are the results so far? That's 
cool, you know, on paper, maybe. I don't know if you like the idea. I do. I like it. <laughs> um, right now, sort of as it stands, I only have RISC-V support because I looked at x86 and was like, okay, later, you know, don't want to deal with that right now. Uh, also looked at ARM, didn't understand it. Both of that, you know, we'll get to. RISC-V, you know, treated me well to begin with. It is about 60k lines of code. Um, and that is quite a lot more than what you would expect for a microkernel, but it also has a full, like, you know, WebAssembly compiler built in. Um, split into two parts, right? The bootloader, that, the sort of signature checking and all the setup, and then the kernel, which is essentially just a WebAssembly runtime running on bare metal. Uh, and that, you know, cool thing about Rust, it's using CraneLift, which is sort of the optimizing compiler that's written for WASM time, you know, the WebAssembly runtime. Uh, I had to fork it to add like no SCD support to make it run on bare metal, um, which cool thing will contribute back upstream. So if you want to run, you know, wasn't time on bare metal yourself, uh, you know, that will be a thing soon. And that's actually like one thing I sort of want to emphasize. We heard a lot about like, you know, how great Rust, like memory safety and stuff. But what I really appreciated is dependency, like sort of uh, package management, cargo, right? being able to just like cargo add compiler, right? I can just pull in crates, three of them, and just have a like running comp compiler in my kernel. Like how, how cool is that, right? And of course, you know, be careful about dependencies and like gets out of hand if you're not careful. But I've, to me, like that is a superpower, right? Like that is very cool. Yes, you know, memory safety is great, but we heard about all that. The other thing I like, you know, noticed about Rust and writing in Rust is that if you're writing an operating system and, you know, your machine does that all the time, you know, store page fold, load page fold, and like everything just disappears. Being able to just claw back all the static guarantees you can get about your program, like as much as possible, that is very powerful. And I, I wouldn't have, you know, don't want to write it in C, certainly, because like all the sort of nice static guarantees you get from Rust. Um, Another result, right, something I noticed is that being the kernel that sort of you target and also the compiler that targets the kernel unlocks so many cool possibilities. Um, for example, you know, as you heard in the, in the previous talk, oftentimes, you know, you want to target newer hardware features than what otherwise might be available. And that usually means either so drop, like dropping support for older hardware or sort of, you know, selectively doing like code path or something like that or, you know, just be, being very defensive about what sort of targets, like, what sort of instructions you can target, right? Because instructions that my CPU doesn't know about bad times. You know, trust me, I know I, my JIT compiler does that a lot. Um, but the cool thing is, because I'm the compiler, you know, much like, you know, Gen2, for example, I know exactly what features each CPU core has, right? And even if it's like a super complicated like SOC that has like one ARM chip and one RISC-V chip or multiple RISC-V chips, like I can target those and just like compile specific code for each of those CPUs, um, which is very nice. It also unlocks one thing that I, you know, talked about previously where traditionally microkernels are super sort of overhead heavy, right? Because you need to do a lot of context switching and that traditionally means like storing all the registers and all the like thread state. And then you have to be really pessimistic about it because as the kernel, you don't know which register might, uh, registers might have been sort of overwritten and which are still sort of like previously, right? Except for we are the compiler, right? We, ex we know which registers are used and which aren't, right? And we can then build special sort of trampoline functions to jump to other processes that just save exactly the state that we need to and not more than that. Which means that sort of, you know, now suddenly the overhead of jumping between different processes, right? becomes like almost the cost of a, just a regular function call, right? I just push my registers onto the stack and jump to a different process, like no big deal. And I can do that because, you know, I am the compiler and I know exactly sort of what every process needs because I just compiled them, right? That said, I don't know how we're looking on time. That's all right. Let's do a demo, shall we? All right, so I've got a very complicated program. 
let's make that can we can i can i not uh, how do i i like rust drover i just don't there we go what's the oh no i won't type that anyway i hope you can halfway decent see that uh it's a fibonacci program right it calculates fibonacci numbers and if we now go ahead and compile that it compiles very fast i know <laughs> um we have you know our WebAssembly sort of compiled and then if we jump over to sort of our test function in, in now in the kernel itself right what we do is sort of we do all the setup we include sort of the WebAssembly bytes and then you know we parse it, we link it, we instantiate it. We get a f sort of get the you know the Fibonacci function, and then we call it, right down here. And so, maybe I should, because that's the fun part. Open. Sorry for the white. Because here I can just. And, you know, when we run our kernel, we'll sort of buy that, run the bootloader, set everything up, and then compile everything, and it has a lot of debug output. Jump to WASM, and we get a result. Um, I'm very happy to report that is one of two, one of two programs I can run, right? Very exciting stuff. The other one is the same program, but written in C. So, you know, uh, good times. If uh, get that back up. All right. I just said, you know, I have two programs I can run, which isn't a lot. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> so, you know, what's next? Because I feel like this is a good idea. It's fun. And it's also something I just want to push a bit more. You know, it's a, it's an idea. It's a prototype. I want to explore it a bit. I want to, I have so many ideas I want to try out. For example, you know, build a real-time debugger. I have a sort of a, an experiment visualizing like heap allocation and sizes of all that. Um, you know, more WebAssembly, like support more stuff, uh, support proposals, support the components proposal, core types. Build a proper scheduler, uh, you know, dynamic linking, all that. And then open source it, right? That's very important to me uh, because I like open source. I don't know, but, you know, um, which is, soon TM, right? I won't open source it right now because I didn't have the time. If you want to follow along, right? And know when it's open source, you know, hang out, chat about it. I made up a, like it made a Discord server if you want to hang, you know, talk about WebAssembly, talk about embedded, talk about OS stuff, stuff like that. Very happy to have you. Otherwise, you know, Twitter, Mastodon, or just, you know, come and talk after. Um, that said, thank you. Questions and then lunch. Two minutes. <laughs> I should not stand in front of the QR code. So are there any questions? Hands clean. See lots of phones. I see a question there. Oh, okay. Sorry. Hi, uh, I was wondering what you intend to do about DMA safety in drivers and things like that. Right. You know, this is a challenging thing. That is a challenging thing. Um, one experiment I want to try is, you know how WebAssembly has the concept of linear memories, right? And by default, you have one, but you can also have multiple memories. And you can also import and export memories. And so the one thing I want to try is, can I import from the kernel sort of a memory with like a special name, right? And instead of that being just like a heap allocated space, it would then map to like a, like a, a MMIO, a app sort of MM, memory mapped IO, yeah, MMIO. Uh, register that thing, right? So um, basically, you like treat everything as memory mapped I/O, and then import and export different memory readings. That's my plan right now. I think it might work. We'll see. Uh, if not, then revisit that. But that's a research item, definitely. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry. So Awesome. How do you how do you plan to deal with things that are very in uh, performance intensive, like things like Zlib that have to be simply right. optimized explicitly? That right. So 
Web, WebAssembly has support for SIMD, right? And my idea is that if sort of we have this compiler that everything shares, right? If I want to optimize something for a sort of very specific hardware, then why not just contribute that support to the compiler instead of like baking that in into my app where only I can use it? Why not make that be supported by the compiler so possibly more people can use it, right? So of sharing work in that way where if I work sort of on this shared thing, then possibly more people get to benefit from it than just sort of my weird niche little optimization scenario. Um, yeah, I hope that answers it. <laughs> Any more questions? Uh, yes. Um, yeah, I'm working on a uh, firmware that is written in Rust, uh, also known as Orboot. You might have heard of it. I uh, would right. really like to run this here. Uh, ah. Let's do this on bare metal. Yes. And I've actually been pitching this, so this is perfect because I also wanted to do this and now you did it, so thank you. Awesome. Well, any more questions? Final question. Hey, uh, nice talk. I just wanted to commend you for doing anything related to Wasm time because I have also ported that to one of my Rust OSs and it was a nightmare. So. I don't want to. I don't want to let people uh, walk away without understanding how impressive that is. So great job with that. Um, my my actual question is: There have been a variety of Wasm-based operating systems um, in academia and open source. Some are like KWAST. Redshirt is one. I was wondering if you could, if you're familiar with them, uh, could you explain like what are the main differences in your work versus them? So I must admit, I haven't, as far as sort of code goes haven't looked at those too much so okay. that that's a good question i yeah, no worries. really <laughs> can't tell you um i think one of the big differences at least right now architecturally is that i only support risk 5 versus most of those operating systems that sort of target x86 right yep, they do. and um that really has nothing to do with the WebAssembly part of it but that sort of means like you know all your sort of code in the sort of behind the scenes operating system and the bootloader and the setup and all that uh, tends to be like sort of, you know, shaped by the x86 idiosyncrasies. And mine, you know, right now, sort of I kept, I, I tried to kept it like reasonably general so that the abstractions could map to x86 as well. Um, but it's sort of definitely shaped sort of by, you know, uh, reduced instru instruction set architecture, sort of, you know, ARM, Risk Five, uh, kind of that space. Maybe one last follow-up question. Uh, why did you select the microkernel architecture? You have WASM, has some right. degree of isolation, maybe not perfect, especially in the face of, like, speculative execution attacks, but do uh, you ever think about running it all in Ring Zero, whatever that's called on Risk V? Um, yes, and... I mean, you could, the, the, the cool part is, like running stuff in it's called in Rust 5 it's called supervisor mode well it's machine mode but then you don't really run in machine mode um the cool part about sort of being having this setup is that sort of running WebAssembly in supervisor mode versus in user mode is really like just a different trampoline into wasm right like that doesn't really change anything um why i sort of think it's cool to have this microkernel architecture is that WebAssembly has very strong support for modules, for imports, for exports. And to me, like that just lends itself very well to like doing the microkernel architecture where like everything is sort of it modules and you have like sort of uh, package management and, and do all that of like uh, that way. Um, also because you sort of, you know, as I said, you kind of eliminate most of the overhead of like traditional like two system call IPC in microkernels where you like need to like send messages through the kernel space every time. Right. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to uh, contribute to this as well since I have uh, an OS that runs some of this stuff for x86 and R. Yeah. Which is perfect since that's, I don't Happy to risk. chat. <laughs> yeah. Happy to chat. Thanks very much. Awesome. Well then, thanks a lot. Yeah. Give a big hand of applause to guys.